development function and other matters properly related thereto. Mr. Baker. Mayor, Council, Aaron Baker, Interim Economic Development and Redevelopment Director. Uh, we bring before you an item in response to the December 13th, 2011 meeting. Um, at that time, Council directed staff to examine the possibility of privatizing the city's economic development function. A committee of five community members was put together um, who are of varying levels of experience and expertise in the field um, and who are willing to serve uh, on the committee. I want to thank them very much for their hard work over the past few months. Um, these members include Dave Balwig, business owner of Low Tech, Ken Cook, uh, secretary, Rob Fuller, business development director for Mesa View Hospital, George Galt, he served as our chair, Roger Ingritson, he's a business owner, and Rebecca Meddy Burns with the uh, Workforce and the Economic Development Office of College of Southern Nevada, and Darlene Montague, and myself. Um, the committee was charged with three overarching tasks, uh, namely for recommending a structure for economic development, um, funding sources for a possible economic development organization, and a mission statement. Um, with that, George Galt, the chair of the committee, he is here to make the presentation um, for the committee. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, Council, staff members. Uh, I'm George Galt, Chair of the Technical Steering Committee on Economic Development. <clears throat> I'd like to start by saying thank you for the uh, opportunity to s hopefully serve the community in a positive way and to thank my fellow committee members for some good hard work and, and uh, careful thought. As you know, uh, we were charged with three things, looking at the structure, possible structure, funding and the mission. We met throughout the, uh, the last few months looking at a number of other communities and how they had structured their economic development programs, what made them successful, and what we thought might work here. <clears throat> uh, that was really facilitated by the fact that all of the committee members that had prior economic development experience in other communities, they had contacts where we were able to get information from other communities and take a good look at, uh, again, what we thought would work here and be successful. Then we looked at what we thought a, a committee like this or a structure, an organization like this should accomplish. We thought it was important that we find a way to continue the liaison with the city because clearly as we move forward, the city is going to be a key role and have a key role in this as will the state these some of the new regional partnerships that are being put together by the state. We wanted to coordinate with those. We wanted to be action oriented, maintain, be able to maintain the confidentiality of projects that might come before the, the uh, council and the, and the, uh, the new organization. We wanted to be business friendly. Uh, obviously, we need, would need to be accountable in, in a variety of ways. We thought about the need to separate the recruitment function and the incentive capability and approval and resolve conflicts over advocacy. <clears throat> we looked at other organizations in the community and talked about the need to help for those organizations to also be successful. I mean, the, the CDC working on community development things, the chamber working on business issues, those need to work along with what we thought the mission of this organization should be, which is recruitment of outside companies, what we're calling value-added business, companies that have a product, they make, they sell it, or a service that they sell outside the area and bring money inside. We, uh, we talked about creating a mesquite-centric organization that would um, be a 501c6 in accordance with current IRS regulations, be a private nonprofit organization with a small working board of business leaders, probably five people, with the mission of recruiting value-added companies. We would come back, uh, assuming that the council 
would look favorably on this and accept the recommendation. We would intend to go forward as a group and put a, an organization together, apply for the IRS status, uh, incorporate in the state, move that, all, all of the mundane details, the bylaws and personnel policies and so on, put those together, and then develop a contract that we would come back and approach the city with to uh, contract with the city for business recruitment service. We would intend to hire professional staff and an organizational support person and um, hopefully be able to move through that process and start operations about the 1st of January 2013. So, that I, I would be my presentation, and I would be pleased to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Gold. Any questions from the council? Councilman Ramson. Thanks, George. It's, it's, uh, you guys did a lot of good work. Um, I, I would like to clarify for, for the public that when you say we, um, you're, you're talking in terms of the board that will be created right. at some point without knowledge of who that is at this point. Exactly. And further that it's an unpaid volunteer board. Yes. So there's no personal benefit to, to you or the people who created this. No. Um, the recruitment will be an, an individual, but that will be through a normal recruitment process, I presume. Yes, that, that's a good clarification. Thank, Thank you. you. Another question, Mr. Hanson? Go ahead. I think I have one for uh, Mr. Baker, perhaps, or, or perhaps Mr. Barton, if, if it's appropriate. Um, obviously, the funding in the first three years is, is contemplated to be through through the city, principally, and, and possibly some other grants from state or regional um, sources. What, in an estimate, and without breaking it down, without having to disclose salaries and wages and benefits and so forth, what would we have spent in a typical year on average, and this would probably, and not particularly this year, but over a series of years, on average, as an economic department itself? When you strip out some of the functions that the economic development department has fulfilled in the, fat, in the past, and some of the contracts that are now in athletic and leisure services, you get it down to kind of what we're talking about here, it's in the neighborhood of about $250,000. And that would, that would include uh, one, one staffer um, and then a support person. That's, uh, that's a considerable bump amount. And then uh, and for further clarification, then if, if the board, if the council was to uh, embrace this, then we would see an incremental, a substantially incremental decrease in our cities cost, I mean, specific, as opposed to funding something outsourced, it would just be going for one or the other. Correct. Councilman Haven? That number, uh, Aaron, the, the 40000 or whatever we used to give to the uh, long drive, that used to come out of economic development? Is That's that correct. Right? And that is now under athletic and leisure services. And there are some other contracts in there as well of the same nature. And you pull, you pull that out with that? Number? Yes. Okay. A question, George, maybe uh, you or Dave can answer this. Uh, you mentioned the CDC. At one time, it was contemplated that the CDC might request some funding from the city. If, if this were to roll forward, was that anticipated they would still request funding? Or do, uh, was that anticipated? Or, or you want to answer that, Dave? Dave Baldwin, I'm going to speak a little unofficially for the CDC. But yeah, we were looking at redevelopment monies. Not not general fund monies is what we'd be requesting. Thank you, um, George. The uh, you mentioned in here. Uh, I'm just going to read some of the recommendations or direction here. So we recommend a strong working board of directors made up of key business owners and operators, as well as well as qualified community representatives, be formed to provide executive level guidance and input to the newly hired uh, EDO director. Uh, jumps down. Can you talk about how who's going to select that board? Is that going to be your committee, or how, how did you anticipate that board uh, being selected? Yeah, we really haven't gotten that far, but yeah, I think that will be the starting point. But there's been no 
I mean, do you have any ideas, suggestions now that who's going to create that board? Because that's going to be that's key. That's obviously. the determining factor on this program. You bet. No, we, our committees talked about us proceeding to try to pull this together yeah. with input from lots of folks. And, and there's been some great discussion. Appreciate all those who participated. Um, there's some great information in here. It's, it comes down to, you know, if we're going to jump in this boat, we better get, we better get in the middle of it instead of being on the edge because right. we've got to, we've got to make it flow, make it work. So. I, I see this as a key investment for the community. Councilman Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, George, I'm reading through this. It looked like the, <clears throat> the plan is, uh, and you came up with some specific cost numbers for the city going out for five years and percentages of uh, how much uh, would be funded by the city and how much would be funded by other entities. Uh, I don't know what those other entities are. I wonder if you could fill us in on what your thoughts were there. And then also, uh, at the end of five years, it gets down to 50%. Uh, the thing I was a little, <clears throat> I didn't really understand is how many people at the end of four or five years would you estimate that we would be looking at? We, talking about uh, just the director and an assistant or are we talking about a larger staff or uh, also I think uh, the other question I had too and I'll let you just have small one but the other question was uh, uh, the director uh, you need to uh, obviously it talks about uh, going out and finding that individual so with that be done before you actually put the board together? Uh, would that person have any input on the individuals that would be on the board? And if not, why not? Our, our thought, and let me try to do that in reverse, and you're going to have to help me remember the questions now. Um, our, our thought was that the board should come together first and be involved in hiring the director. Right, and that yeah. makes perfect sense. I guess my question, the question was, uh, would, you, would you go through that first and then from that point then once you have that director hired, then, then you would actually put the final uh, board with his input as well uh, together? No, I think you've got to start the board first. And, I, and we've talked in committee about if we really, uh, if, if this board really becomes the working board we envision, they may not, you know, there may be pretty substantial turnover. There's going to be plenty of opportunity in the future for the director to be engaged in, in recruiting board members. Okay. Um, the other thing you mentioned too, and I'll just, uh, you talked about funding uh, starting uh, in 13. Mm -hmm. The budget now, of course, has been written through 12, 13, so it would be already through uh, July or end of June of 13 before we would be into a new budget cycle. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think the only thing that's budgeted for economic development right now is $100,000, which is probably uh, taking care of what we currently have. The gentleman standing next to Um, if I may, Councilman Gustafson, um, that would take a budget amendment in order to do this because there are not sufficient funds in 1088 in order to do that. So there would need to be, a, we would need to look to other areas of the budget besides just the economic development fund budget this year, um, which, which budget amendments are a possibility for your consideration. So. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we were all aware of that, that there would be a budget amendment because that was my assumption as well. Thank you. Councilman Hafen? Uh, maybe uh, Debbie or Andy can address that uh, as far as, you know, 
where that might, if this were to go forward, where the lose, uh, where that might come from. And Aaron, after that, if you would just, for the for the benefit of the public, if you would maybe just uh, go over the uh, commitment that the city might uh, that's requested from the from the committee as far as what the city's commitment is on a, from the financial end of, you just go over that appendix B. Certainly. We can flip to my appendix B, thank you. Um, initially, for fiscal year 13, so that'll be from Jan 1 of uh, 13 through June 30th, the, the uh, committee is, is re requesting 100,000. Uh, for fiscal year 14, it's 200,000. Uh, for fiscal year 15, that's 205, and then 210, and then 215 in fiscal year 17. And this is to cover uh, staff, wages, benefits, taxes, both for uh, uh, president slash CEO and operational support. So that would be an office uh, office staffer. This covers operations in the way of rent, utilities, um, equipment, the like. Professional services, um, this would be your accountant, your attorney, so on and so forth. Um, travel and marketing, I think, are pretty self-explanatory as well on that. Um, it, it's a modest budget. Um, it's not, I don't think it's um, a, a great budget that's being asked for. It mirrors similar budgets that the city has had in the past in the, on the expenses on the expense side. Um, and, it's, and it looks like some other organizations we've looked at as well. So. Is there anything else on that you would like me to elaborate on? As to its source, um, that would be a question that would have to be decided, I think, at the moment, depending on where revenues are, because some revenues may come in or below where we're projecting at the present moment. Um, Councilman Hafen, did that answer your question on uh, from Andy or Debbie? Okay. Councilman Rapson. Um, there's a couple of things that occur to me. One is that, that we have been at least perceived to be very ineffective in, in how we develop business, and that's one. Two, there's also been a large discussion, or an ongoing discussion, I should say, about whose function it is to develop business. And three, the fact that quite often when the city tries to develop business, they it, it, it easily becomes political and can come contentious, whereas it's simply trying to bring business. What I, in discussions with the committee and committee members, what I envision is something a little more packaged and streamlined where businesses are recruit are actively recruited as opposed to stumble through the door. They also are vetted by the, the board and the economic director. Their financials will be scrutinized, I presume. The requirements with respect to the specific business itself, water, power, gas, rail, all the things, so we don't get some of these pie in the sky things and promises. And there's some hand holding through the process to get through the city's approval, um, ultimate approval for denial of whatever the business likes or business is. I see that as a much more effective way of businesses being handled, if you will. And I see it as probably something the business itself would would, would um, enjoy the fact that there's confidentiality, there's not a a large discussion in front of the board or the council uh, throughout a series of meetings. Anyway, I see a lot of benefits to this, and and I see how we have somewhat failed in the past. And there's a couple of points I'd like to make, and I and, and one of them is, and, and this is something Councilman Hayden mentioned or reminded me of, was the the roundabouts. Now, although I, I take we take I take no credit for this at all. I'm just mentioning that that originally started as a private venture. That was a coalition of private people who funded that. Um, so there is a history of people, businesses funding things in this town. They funded a study, and I think it was the tune of 60 or 70,000 dollars 
that was a PBS and J engineering, high, high end engineering, graphic engineering firm in Las Vegas, and they produced a very, very thorough document, which essentially is what we have today. That was one of the options. Um, that it evolved over a series of years and the economic economics changed and so on and so forth. But there is a history of private business being involved in things that are important to this community. Um, the second thing is we've had a history of some businesses approaching the city and like, and I'm going to throw them out whether you like it or approved it or, or supported it or not, it doesn't matter, they're gone. Um, Side Global, um, the Shrimp Farm, things that became political footballs and never got past first base. And I, and I think that this is a mechanism, and if it's ultimately rejected, it doesn't matter. It, and, and I'm not saying they won't be, but we have a history that could be improved upon. I think that's my point. Councilman Wittheller. Thank you, Thank you Your Honor. <coughs> George, I, this, this may be uh, kind of a dumb question, but is there any federal money for such projects through maybe SBA or any of those organizations through uh, the federal government? Um, when you say such projects, I'm not sure what part of that you're thinking about, but clearly there's still federal money, grant money available. And, you know, the SBD, the Small Business Development Center program, for example, is still around and doing well in, in lots of places. And uh, the USDA rural development funds are readily available in rural communities. So, and I, that's one of the things we talked about as a role for this organization is to try to find some of those things. And, Typically, you can use that money for infrastructure development, for example, in a new project. Well, is it, is it even remotely possible that we can put uh, a task force, for lack of a better word, together to, to contact these agencies and see exactly what may be available, if anything? Absolutely, and I think uh, the new regional development authority is probably going to begin to inventory that stuff pretty quickly. But yeah, I would think that would be part of the thing we would do. Good, thank you. On someone with me. But George, prior to going out and looking for federal funds and so forth, wouldn't it be absolutely necessary to form the 5016 uh, prior to that? Right. Uh, because they're not going to talk to anybody without a set up organization already, as I understand it. Exactly. So you'd have to move forward with that first. Right. And th there is a bit of leeway in that. Um, when you do that application, which is on what IRS calls the Form 1023, once you submit your application and receive notice from the IRS that they've received it, you can begin to operate as if you have that status. Any further questions from Council? Councilman Haven? No, I'm putting you on the spot, but I'm going to go back to the question about, and maybe some of the other committee members might want to come up, or I hope we're going to open up the public for some input, but uh, the ultimate formation of this committee, I mean, I'm not going to hold you to it, but I mean, obviously you guys have whether you discuss it or not, there's some kind of a, an idea you have of how this is going to come together, who's going to select that committee mm -hmm. in the process. Maybe just elaborate a little bit for me, if you would. I'm not sure. I mean, I'd welcome anybody. Well, and, I, yeah, and I'd like to hear from them as well, because, sure. I mean, th 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 this, is, this is the driving force behind the Absolutely. success of this program. Yeah. Dave Baldwin, I've uh, kind of spoke a lot about the, the formation of this, uh, of this board, because it's going to be the the key to making this whole thing work. This board's going to have to be active. It's not going to be an honorary position. They're going to have to be expected to actually put in time, do work uh, to, to this board. How it will be selected is, uh, I think it's pretty much been decided that every all the members of this committee are willing to uh, stay on board and, and help select that committee uh, of the people. And, and we've always stated that the criterion for the selection is going to be key and important. They're going to have to be active. They're going to have to understand they're going to be active. And, and I think George made a comment uh, early that, you know, 
he said turnover, and I think turnover is because people are going to find that they're going to put a lot of time into this, and they're not going to be willing to want to put the time that we envision into it in, in, in perpetuity. They're going to want to do their deal, find somebody that will replace them, and, and step in their shoes and help. But I think if, if we can find the first committee or this first board that's really active, and maybe we can start getting some done, and we can see other business people see, look, there's really something going on here, and be willing to really help us move ahead. Uh, Roger Ingretson, we had a lot of discussion about how to, first of all, we researched a lot of other similar sized towns and other sized towns to see how they were set up and, and some of them how they had recreated uh, where they were because we're going through tough economic times. And it really gets down to we have to get some very, very key business people in this town excited about this program. That's the bottom line. When you get a CEO of a company or a VP of a company, if they volunteer their time to get onto an economic development board, they won't fail. It's not their nature. They think business, they think business to business, and they're gonna make sure, they, if we get the right combination of people, they will make sure that they go out and they do everything they possibly can for the betterment of this community. That's just the way business people think. And as we've said, they're going to burn themselves out because they're going to get engaged and then they're going to let some other business people that are come on, even maybe new businesses that come in who have other ideas. And that's the essence of how we'll grow the economic development. It's business centric. And this is not unlike any other business uh, or any other economic development council where you didn't have a city or a county putting some seed money in there as a flooring to get the whole uh, operation started. Once you have a viable economic development council, there's all kinds of money you can go out there for. We don't have that right now. That's the bottom line. But there's state money. We know there's state money available. There's going to be county money available. We don't even think about them, but we didn't really discuss that much the federal because that's really up in the air right now. But there is state money, but the, the state looks to, do you have an organization in place that the people that are a part of that organization, again, a very strong business-oriented board, if they are really in tune to what's going on in your community, then you can go after that money. And they will put the plans to go after that money. So that's, that's, that was our whole thought process. And again, as, as uh, George said, we looked at many different models out there. We were trying to get a model that would fit this town based on history and based on what we think is going to happen going forward. Councilman Hayden. So as original committee members, have you guys contemplated uh, being on the next uh, board? Not on the board. Uh -huh. helping, helping to select the, the well but, but my question is on the board I mean here, here's the question you're sold enough on this program that if it comes down to it you're asked to be on the board are you guys willing to be on the board I would be good be today. And I, would, I guess I would just add procedurally the way that I would envision this happening is the same way that we moved through this other process. We'd sit down and, and brainstorm names, talk about the kinds of people we want, and come to consensus. No, and I mean, the reason I uh, asked the question, I think you know where I'm going, is, you know, if, if you're committed to something, you're willing to give me a jump in the row. And I, you know, you guys put a lot of work and effort into this, and. And uh, I can I can see the passion behind uh, where you think this can go, and that's why I'm, I'm, I want to see the commitment. Thanks, Councilman Rapson. I think that was a, a, a pretty fair analysis that that you have to have something before you can ask for something, and and that's what every single business does to get a loan. 
is they have to have a management team in place. They have to have an organizational structure. They have to have a business plan. They have to have marketing plans. They have to have financial performance. They have to have everything before they go to a bank and ask for money. And that's what we have to get to before we start looking for funding outside of our own house. But it takes something to start it. Right. And, I, and I believe, my personal belief is that that money would be better spent and more effective in this format than it is with us doing what we've been doing for the last, I don't know how many years. It's Cardenas. Uh, just to finish answering uh, Councilman Hafen's question, um, if the city does fund any part of this, then it would come out of the general fund reserves. Councilman with Helmer. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just to, to piggyback off of uh, Mr. Ingbertson's uh, comments, uh, and this is to getting um, business leaders within the city involved in this process. Uh, obviously, you guys have given it uh, some consideration and thought. Have you formulated uh, any thoughts in your mind about who you may, and without naming names, want to approach to uh, sit on this committee at this point? Only very informally, and I don't think we really didn't talk about it in the committee other than kind of how we would do it. No, I'm, and I'm not looking for names, but uh, obviously there are some quite successful people in this town that, that I think if we if we put the hammer on them that they would probably serve in a capacity that, that would benefit us all. And uh, again, as we spoke earlier, there are some, some very uh, successful people in this town that in, in retirement capacities that have served in, in um, various capacities within business mm -hmm. that are, are probably very capable of business leaders that could, that could lend a hand in uh, formulating these opinions. So, thank you. Councilman Rose? I'm sorry to keep buttoning up here, but um, uh, I guess it's a question for Ms. Hunt. Um, the staff recommendation, I'm out of question, so now I'm just asking you, um, receive uh, the presentation and provide possible direction um, regarding implementation. Is that is that to approve this plan or is that to um, direct what? Okay, it's time that I wrote it. <laughs> Probably best for me to decipher it. Um, there are three points in here and the, and the first is to receive the presentation, obviously. Uh, I think that's pretty self-explanatory step. I'm going to jump to the last one, sunsetting the committee, since it was organized under the purview of the city council, it needs to be sunset as well. Um, and provide possible direction. Those directions could say, um, could be anything from, we appreciate your presentation this evening, we're going to keep doing it the way we're doing it. Um, it could be, we appreciate what you've done, we want you to look at this some more, or it could be, um, we appreciate what you've done, we want to go forward with your recommendations. Um, come back to us in a fixed period of time and bring back a contract um, for us to look at and get final approval to. So. Ms. Hunt, you have a question or comment? Thank you, Council Mayor. I just want to add to that. If the Council wants some more things answered and you feel like you want to direct the committee to maybe meet one more time and bring you back answers, then you wouldn't sunset it tonight. You would set it for another day and sunset it. Thank you. Councilman Littman. Just a quick question, George. Uh, when you talk about this new board being formed, how large of a board are you contemplating at this point? Uh, minimum, maximum? Five members. Five members, thank you. Councilman Ramson. My final comment on this, um, I promise, Dwayne's left. Um, we've we've engaged many committees over the years. I've been on several of them, and we've. I know that these guys have worked really hard, and there's some really smart people on this this committee. And what I what I think we have a tendency to do sometimes is thank you very much for your hard work, and ignore the input. And, we, we, and, I, and I 
I think that sends the wrong message. I think at some point we have to we have to man up and say, okay, these guys did a good job. They came to a, a reasonable conclusion, and I frankly don't have an alternative that's any better than this. And I appreciate the work they did, no matter how everybody else feels here. I'm not sure, but I got to tell you, I really thank you for your work. I think it's a great report, and I and I cannot envision anything that would be more effective than this. Councilman Lippman. I am prepared to make a motion on this if uh, there's no further discussion on it. Let me find out on the discussion. Any further? Councilman Hafen, do you have something? I should have thought of this earlier, but uh, I guess I have to concur with George. Uh, but I wish I would have asked Debbie to give us a, like, a running total for the last five years of what we actually have spent on economic development. Because as I've kind of just looked at it, it appears we're just basically using the same dollars, we're just going to kind of use a different uh, agenda to go after business uh, and see if we can be successful. So, I mean, I hopefully that's a fair statement. I don't know, Debbie, you, you maybe haven't had a chance to really analyze that. I should have asked you, but... Uh, uh, yeah, I don't. I, I, um, I can say that I believe that the funding uh, was coming out of RDA funds and the revenues that we've received for that, if that's correct. <coughs> Let me provide one point of clarification on that. Historically, economic development has been funded out of the general fund. Um, a couple of years ago, a redevelopment was brought over from the planning department and the director and a support staff member was paid out of redevelopment. A portion of the director was paid out of them because they had responsibility for redevelopment, but historically it's been paid out of the general fund. Um, currently, it's 50-50 because I'm currently serving as economic development director and redevelopment director, so I split my time. 50, so that's why it is the way it is in the current budget, but historically it's been general fund. Thank you. Any further discussion? Question? Seeing none, Mr. Lippman. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, at this point, I'd like to make a motion to receive the presentation from the committee, provide possible direction to the committee regarding implementation of their recommendations by moving forward in selection of a board and applying for a 501 C6 status, funding pending. Now one second. You want some clarification? Yes, I do want some clarification. Do you want to sunset the committee as well? Let me check with uh, our legal, we can? Yes. Okay, and so Based on that motion. Uh, if you have all the answers, you can. I believe I have all the answers. Uh, everything seems to fall into place. So uh, adding to that and sunsetting the committee uh, upon approval of the motion. Okay. Hold one second. Is this clarification to the motion? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if we sunset the committee, who's going to carry forward in, in, in the 501, you know? I mean, who's going to do that? We will, as a private group. OK. Okay, so we do have a motion and more clarification on that motion. We'll seek a second. Councilman Hayden? I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, we'll call for the vote. Okay, that motion does carry.